Hey guys, what's up? It's Carl here, back with, of course, the fan favorite, the monthly tech unboxing haul. And this month, Techtober absolutely crushed me. We had the most tech come into this studio that I've ever had, I think, in the history of the channel. But on the flip side, I've got some good news to still hook you guys up with one of the items from today. A lot of you mentioned in my last episode that I just need to correspond to you through Instagram. It makes things a bit more legit because each of you only have one IG account. So that's the plan for today's episode. So all you have to do to win one of the items, just leave a comment down below on your favorite item. Of course, leave your IG handle, hit that sub button, hit that like button if you did enjoy the video. And by my next tech unboxing haul, I will DM that person and send out a piece of tech. And that's hopefully sorted and we'll get rid of all the spam. So let's get started first. We had the big, big influx of Apple products. We of course had the iPhone 12s come out and in one of my most popular videos, we kind of talked about the different colorways. We'll get to that in a second. If you are on the fence of upgrading to the 12, I'm still working on my full review. I honestly think if you have the 11, maybe not worth it. I'll leave a video linked up this way, kind of explaining my reasons, but I wish there was still the poll option on YouTube to kind of pick which color was my personal favorite, or at least let you guys decide. Honestly, for the 12 Pros, it was the biggest toss up between either the gold or the new Pacific blue. I love the banding of the gold. I think it looks super luxe, but I'm just not crazy about this backing. It's almost a bit beigey. And I think my final decision was of course the Pacific blue. So for the 12 pros, let me know which one was your fave. And over on the standard 12s, I also kept my blue game going. This is the one that I picked, but let me know which one was your fave. I think my least favorite was the product red as it's a bit more salmony and this green, which which I think is a bit too minty. I think I'm gonna try to use it for at least 30 days to get my full thoughts and opinions because yeah, obviously they're a ton of money. So make sure you stay posted to the channel. The second thing coming from Team Apple was of course the new iPad Airs. And to kind of sum up this video in case you did miss it, yes, they also do come in these dope new colorways. I've got the green here. This is currently the best iPad that you can buy. It's got the new A14 Bionic chip. It's got a completely new redesign. It's got Apple Pencil 2. The price is $200 cheaper than the iPad Pro. I think the list goes on and on. And until we do see that refresh of the iPad Pro, I think I would lean over to this one. Once again, video linked up this way in case you want to check it out fully. Keeping on the smartphone game, I know that I showed a lot of love to the Pixel 5 coming in at $500, but the one phone that I didn't really review yet was the Pixel 4a 5G. And if you don't need any of the extra perks that the five offers, so the premium build, it's completely made out of recycled aluminum. It's also $200 cheaper, which I think is the biggest reason. It doesn't have as much RAM, so six gigs compared to the eight. And lastly, a 60 Hertz display versus a 90. Maybe that's the biggest thing that's kind of swaying me in the direction. But if you wanna save $200 and none of those things matter to you, it's still got the same camera sensor, one of the best that you can currently get. Same chipset inside, so the performance is almost identical and it has a similar form factor. It's way larger than say the smaller Pixel 4a, which makes this a real viable option if you wanna stick under that $500 price point. So that is the 4a 5G. I think Google is doing it right with their smartphones. They hit it out of the park, I think with all three of their phones this year. More from Google, they also sent over their updated Nest Audio. They're moving away from their Google Home slash Home Mini name. So this has a bit of a new redesign and it's in that new Sage colorway. So very similar to the Pixel 5. So if you wanna get your matching game on, you know which devices to grab. But honestly, this sounds like one of the better smart home speakers. It's got some really decent bass and I think the form factor is spot on because once you start getting to smaller home speakers, the sound output just isn't as good. Of course, as it's Google based, it has the best voice assistant. I think it's way better than say Alexa or Siri. Obviously, I think that's the worst amongst the three. Most of my automated smart devices are controlled in the studio with this device, so that's always dope. I think this is a solid option and it comes in at 99 bucks. So I'm sure this will sell a lot in the holiday season. The next item on the radar, just one of those cool pieces of tech that I'm excited to share. So this is a blue Yeti microphone, but you can see it's a limited edition World of Warcraft model. And I used to play WoW a ton back when I was in university. It got to the point that I was playing so much that I almost had to drop out. So WoW does hold a special, special place in my heart. Out comes the microphone. 
So it's still the same blue Yeti that we kind of know and love. And I actually use one personally when I do stream over on Twitch. It just does have some of the extra markings. So you see all of the gold banding, of course, World of Warcraft, some of the runes around the base. And if you are a big WoW fan and if you still play, I think this will bring a ton of nostalgia slash it's a collector's item, I think. And last but not least, the two big things that came into this studio, maybe the thing that I'm most excited to start testing out, I've kind of dabbled a bit already, the new next gen consoles, of course the Xbox Series S and Series X. And unfortunately, gameplay is still under embargo, so you'll have to wait till next week. But since I've been using both over the past couple days, my initial impressions, I would still lean over to the Series S. It's really hard to utilize the full potential of Series X. You need a lot of extra add-ons. And what I mean by that, you can get up to 4K at 120 FPS, all the way even up to 8K, but you still need an extra TV that can run that, or even a gaming monitor. 4K 120 FPS, usually those are the priciest of the bunch. If you wanna just stick to 1440p 120 FPS, which I think is the smooth spot for gaming, you can get all of that done with the Series S and you'll save a ton of money. But if you already haven't pre-ordered them, make sure you stay posted till next week and I'll kind of compare them more in depth. Okay, that is a lot of tech that we just kind of breezed through in a short period of time, but that was my crazy Techtober month. I also got some new gym equipment. I'm trying to make my own studio gym here as things are kind of going back into lockdown mode and all gyms are currently closed in Toronto. I also did get some studio art in, so I am working on an updated studio tour. So make sure you stay posted and I hope you guys enjoyed this vid of all of the unboxings of all of the tech that kind of came in and I am hoping that the new Instagram way of messaging someone is a bit better than emailing. So remember, just leave that comment down below on your favorite item that you saw. If you enjoyed the content, hopefully you guys sub and smash that like button as it helps me out a ton. I know it feels so weird saying that, but it honestly makes the biggest difference. And I will catch the rest of you in one of my next vids or vlogs. Just got a text message. Face.